Okay, so who here thinks that they have the highest screen time? You know that little notification that Apple blesses us with every week telling us how long we've been on our phones? Does anyone here think that they have a screen time higher than 10 hours? Okay, guys, if this is a competition, I'm definitely gonna win because this past week I was on my phone for 11 hours and four minutes a day. And I know that you're all thinking that's harmful and toxic and deteriorating my brain, so I checked the app breakdown. I spent the majority of my time on TikTok followed by Instagram, and to many of you, that would be called a social media addiction, but for me, that's my full-time job. So I am disgustingly perhaps what you might call an influencer. <laughs> so what exactly comes to mind when I say the word influencer? The common associations, pyramid scheme, fraudulent, fake, phony. Maybe that's why I'm a little embarrassed standing up here, a proud graduate of this pristine university, go blue, telling you guys that I use my UMish degree to pursue content creation full time. So I stumbled into both my TikTok and Instagram followings. Today, with nearly 450,000 followers on TikTok and 45,000 followers on Instagram, my platform is dedicated to authenticity and self-confidence. For posting yourself freely and truthfully, where nothing is taboo and nothing is left unsaid. But here's the catch. If I was standing up here my freshman year of college, 2016, in Ann Arbor, I would have told you a vastly different story of my relationship to social media, my thoughts around the toxicity of Instagram, and also my self-confidence in general. I used to be addicted to an app called Facetune. If you're not familiar with what that is, basically the app allows you to whiten your teeth, make your body smaller, smooth out your skin. So here I am, 2016, posting hyper-curated and edited images of sorority bid days, big house celebrations and fun nights out, making my life appear weightless and troubleless when I was in fact deeply emotionally and physically weighed down. Based on what I was posting my freshman year of college, you never would have known that I was struggling with binge eating, body dysmorphia, intense anxiety, general unhappiness, a breast reduction scheduled for May, because I was posting a manicured life that I did not lead whatsoever. You know. I had this merciless need to appear different on the internet than what my life actually was. You know, it was this whole thing where I was posting all of these beautiful images of myself enjoying my life when I really didn't like it at all. But how did I go from, you know, mercilessly needing to appear perfect on social media, not letting my friends post any images of me for fear that they might see what I actually look like, or post something that didn't fit the image I was desperately trying to attain, to today, freely posting every insecurity and flaw and talking about things I never would have imagined, and why did it take me six years to figure that out? It's pretty ironic to reflect on my Instagram behavior in the past because today, many of my followers, some of whom are here, would definitely consider me a content creator that they would associate with realness. But in the past, I was blasting out photos of a manicured life that I did not lead. You know, and I think that my old Instagram presence was a lot of embedded insecurity and it was also outside pressure that many young people face from societal expectations, social norms, and heteronormative ideology. Now, before I go on, allow me to digress. What I mean by heteronormative ideology, this is the quasi rule book that our society generally assumes. This ideology states that individuals would be heterosexual, making straightness the norm, everything else the other. It goes on to assume that women would be heterosexual and catering toward the ideals of cisgendered straight men and subconsciously altering themselves to fall in line with the beauty standard, which is the male gaze. We're going to need this to come to a conclusion today. So back then, what I thought was if I could make myself look wealthy, happy, skinny, successful, beautiful on the internet, people would perceive me that way and actually treat me that way in real life. You know, I thought I could be posting all of these things and people would truly think that that's how I was. And it's addicting to have a mirror to reality where we can micromanage our appearances and tell the story society desperately wants us to tell, one that I believe subconsciously we all also want to tell ourselves. Now, I don't believe that the toxicity of social media or Instagram is unknown to any of you, but I think it's deeply embedded within. Because all along back then, I just wanted to be Eli. But I was told, you're too loud, you're too crazy, you're all over the place, you're too big, you're too much, you're wrong. So I took to the internet to try to become right. My imperfections could not be brightened or whitened or tightened in real life, but they absolutely could be, or at least I could try to make them online. 
A September 2021 article in the Wall Street Journal confirmed and uncovered Instagram's toxicity for young people, but specifically for young women, when researchers on the inside of Instagram found that 32% of young women said that when they felt poorly about their bodies, Instagram made them feel worse. The research goes on to find that 8% of American users who said they experienced suicidal thoughts traced those to Instagram, and furthermore, that users who had experienced mental health issues said that Instagram made these worse. The article cites a myriad reasons this could be true from the need to conform to social stereotypes to match the body image, wealth, and material good of influencers, you know, heteronormative ideology, all sorts of different things, hate speech, bullying, the over-sexualization of girls, and so on. And I confirm all of this, right? I'm gonna stand here and say, that's true. Instagram is toxic. It is a source of harm for young people. But I also have to digress. And I'm sure you're all looking at me, how the hell could you just stand here and tell us, Instagram harmed me, Instagram sucks, Instagram makes people feel terribly about themselves, and also pick out positives. Is it because you profit off of it? And I actually think that my very fluctuating relationship to social media poses me very well to answer these questions. I don't really think this is a fault of an app or apps themselves. And I also think that deleting the apps does not help to quell the voices telling us we're too much or we're wrong or we don't fit in. And I know this because I have tried. So that's my hot take today. This is not Instagram's fault. Instagram is the messenger delivering the content that makes us feel negatively about ourselves. But they say don't shoot the messenger, so I'm not going to. Instagram is the messenger, not the message. Instagram is a vehicle on the highway to hell, but it's just the vehicle. It's not the gas in the car. It's not the impetus to get in the car in the first place. It's not even the paved road or the highway. Instagram is the watering hole where all of this comes to light. So it's not the fault of an app, but rather a societal issue that surrounds how society tells young people they must look, act, and present. An app isn't to blame, but rather the heteronormative ideology that runs through the veins of this society like a crack in the sidewalk. If society force feeds me every day, saying, Eli, in order to reach success, validation, and affirmation, you need to be skinny, beautiful, white, straight, rich, and many times male, I'm going to subconsciously try to do anything I can to get there, right? Like, I'm gonna try to do anything I can to get there. And Instagram is the easiest way, without a shadow of a doubt, that allows me to get there because I can micromanage my appearance in a medium that allows me to do so, so freely. But it was never Instagram causing me to feel horribly about myself. It was an entirely different voice, and Instagram was just applauding this. You know, in 2016, I would have gotten up here had I had the opportunity, don't know why I would have, and I would have said, Instagram sucks. It makes me feel fat, ugly, like a loser and a failure. Because I was too naive. I couldn't pinpoint the other voice, but that's growth. Now I can. You know, that voice is society. Society tells women that in order to win, we need to have everyone like us. We need to reach affirmation and validation from everybody, otherwise we fail. And generally speaking, that affirmation and validation is meant to come from men. So society says, okay, women, you have to be skinny, but also curvy. You need to be beautiful, but also sexy. You have to have fun, but not too much fun. You have to hang out with the right friends, but also a lot of different friends. You have to be flirty and friendly, but not slutty, but also not prude. You have to have thin legs, a round ass, a tight stomach, nice tits, toned arms, a beautiful face. You have to be quiet, but not too quiet. You have to shrink yourself, oh, but please not too much. The noise it drones on and on and on and on until one day I woke up and realized that as a woman here, no matter what I do, somebody somewhere is going to have something to say about how I dress, how I act, and what I say, no matter what. Now, this is not even the fault of Instagram models and the Kardashians, who are problematic in their own right. <laughs> you know, they are, right? So, but it's not their fault because the beauty standard was alive and well long before these people were born to even influence it. It's just very difficult not to have something tangible for us all to blame. Like, we don't want to be blaming this big arbitrary beast. You know, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but it actually isn't. <laughs> beauty is in the eyes of the patriarchy, and men relax. I'm not pointing fingers at you. You're all victims. I'm actually going to teach you a little bit about that. You're all victims, too. <laughs> you know, the patriarchy harvests this heteronormative assumption that I have to attain the male gaze, that I have to be quiet and feminine and as tiny as possible, and that men have to be powerful and unemotional and masculine to hold the power in the relationship. 
The same patriarchy tells any individual that does not fit into this strict gender binary that they are unjustly tossed aside by these unfair and discriminatory rules that govern our society. But all of you hear the noise. The patriarchy harvests heteronormative toxic masculinity in young men. It tells aging individuals, rid yourselves of the lines on your face, the grace in getting older. And of course, furthermore, beauty standards have always been influenced by whiteness, by European cultures, making it impossible for me to stand here and converse about beauty standards without also saying this is about race. So that's all true, right? And we take to Instagram as a mask because it is the only way we can so much as attempt to meet this standard or lie to ourselves and try to. I used Instagram to become socially accepted. I used Instagram to try to feel right. And those without the inherent privileges that I have, thinness, whiteness, et cetera, they struggle to even try to reach those standards online. But because we're told your social media appearance gets to be anything you want it to be, it is without a shadow of a doubt the easiest way that I could at least try to pretend like I meet any of these standards. But after years of whitening and tightening and brightening, I was like exhausted because, by the way, it takes a lot of goddamn effort to be a liar. So I'm like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to post photos of myself looking happy when I felt like shit. I don't want to post photos of myself surrounded by girls who didn't like me and emotionally abusive boyfriends and days when I spent all day in bed crying and posted a photo to try to get someone to give me some validation. I was done. I wanted to post photos of things that made me feel like Eli, things that made me feel good and maybe something that could make somebody else feel good too. So I'm sure now you guys are like, so how did you do that? Like, how did you get Instagram clean? So I quit, actually. I took a month off from posting. It was October 2019, my senior year here at the University of Michigan. And you can ask my friends, it was actually difficult for somebody addicted to the app to just go clean for a month. I literally needed a support system. And then I returned to the app on November 1st, and I had one takeaway instantly. And that takeaway was I took no photos when I had nowhere to post them and I didn't feel better about myself. I didn't like my body. My anxiety wasn't gone. My self-esteem wasn't magically rehabilitated. I felt the same, if not worse, because here's the thing, I like Instagram. And then I reflected on it a bit, and I came up with two things. So the first is that I do not need to lie to myself and everybody else on the internet just to gain the affirmations and validations and respect of people who I do not care for in the first place. If you like me, great, let's get on board the trains leaving the station. If you don't, you stay here, there's another one coming, you know? And second of all, that you're allowed to set boundaries on the internet, right? Like, if I had a friend that was like, dude, you look awful, I hate your body, I would be like, okay, so you're not my friend. So why was I consuming content actively that made me feel awful about myself? And why do any of us? We don't have to, there's a block button, we can use it. And so I dropped the act, and I knew it would be hard. I knew I was going to lose followers, and I also knew I was going to lose friends. In becoming an unabashed version of myself, right, people saw newfound agency, opinionated chaos, someone that everybody my whole life has told me is obnoxious and loud, and they were turned off by it. And I did lose followers, and I lost friends too. But here's the thing. The minute I stopped lying was the minute I became Eli. It was also the minute that I took the first step into finding 450,000 people, that's a lot, who for God knows what reason want to hear what I have to say. I call my followers a team almost every day because they're my team. I can't believe I have a team. And I want my team to win. But winning to me means showing up for yourself, like truthfully and authentically, and honoring your life in a way that you see best fit. It doesn't mean lying. And so I started posting about my struggles with eating and food. And then a week later, it was anxiety and my period. And then eventually, I was like, screw it. Female completion, sex, let's go. There's nothing taboo in my world. And one day, I was like, I'm sad. Can we talk about being sad? And people started listening to me. And not because I was lying, but because I was telling the truth. So recently, my grandmother, hi, Grammy, I know she's watching, she asked me, she said, what do you do? Like, what is, like, what's going on? And I was like, she's a smart 75-year-old, guys, don't get me twisted. And I was like, I'm actually going to tell you the truth, too, because I know what it is. I post about my life on Instagram and TikTok to influence someone 
but not to feel negatively about themselves, not to hate their bodies, not to compare themselves to me, but to feel heard, to feel listened to, to feel excited about life, to feel like they have someone cheering them on, both off screen and on. 